Hello folks and welcome back to Tico Talks. This is the story series where we interview Sri Lankans living abroad about their experiences in the country that they've been in in contrast to and comparing with their experiences living in Sri Lanka and this is not the experience that you would gain as a tourist but as someone who lives there on a daily basis someone who does their daily activities there and who wakes up and who walks the streets and who talks with the people of the country as a person living in the country and um, we're back after a long break uh, so this is going to be season 2b where i had season 3 in the middle so that was a bit of a mess so this is going to be season 2b where we're going to continue the stories series before we go ahead with this podcast this is your friendly reminder to rate this podcast on whatever platform that you're listening to this on if you are listening to the audio version if you are watching this on youtube you know the drill like share subscribe and um, drop your comments down below and um, suggestions are always welcome getting into the podcast today is going to be a bit different actually so all along we've been um, talking to a guest but today we are going to be talking to guests welcome to the show mandrika and ashwin sai hi thank hi, you hi. for having hi, us look, man. Hi guys, it's a, it's a pleasure to have you all on the show and um, so as you all can see today we have two guests on the show who will be um, who are actually from Tbilisi in Georgia. Today you're going to be listening to stories from Georgia. Okay, so guys, uh, before we get into the show, would you like to introduce ourselves to our listeners? Yeah, so um, I'll start off. Um, I'm Ashwin Sai Amilan. Um, I'm a third year medical student. Back here in Tbilisi State Medical University, Georgia. All right. And uh, I'm Manjik Fernando. I am a second year medical student at Tbilisi State Medical University in Georgia. That's cool. So um, we, uh, we all studied together too. <laughs> so uh, Manjik was in the <laughs> same class and uh, Ashwin also was in my same class, um, but uh, different schools. Actually, it's, it was a bit funny. I was talking to uh, one of my friends during, back in the break and I was like, uh, he was asking me who I'm going to interview. So I'm interviewing Manji and... Um, Ashwin Sai and uh, it's from Royal and Thomas, like you know, Royal is uh, <laughs> sure. All right, so um, people who are not from Colombo might not get it. I mean, they would write it from Shane. <laughs> you all actually moved into the country at different points of time, right? So, Ashwin Sai, you went to Georgia back in 2021, December, and yeah. Manji went there uh, last year, right? Last year. Last year. You all might have had different experiences uh, moving in, or it might have been a bit varied. So would you like to talk about uh, what were, what your experiences was like moving into the country, the first few days, months, even the first few hours, like how abrupt, how um, how, how the changes was? Yeah, um, so uh, I moved in uh, on, on during December 2021, but our semester had already started. Um, it was it was back in October itself, so we had to do two months of online, and okay. then um, we got our visas. The COVID was a bit chill then, and and then we we all flew together. We all flew together. We uh, came through Qatar Airways, dropped down at Doha, had a transit, and then came to Tbilisi. Um, I would say the first challenge that comes to mind is um, is probably the weather, because uh, because okay. we all used to you know the sweaty Colombo weather, you know um, we're not used to those Norelia weathers, but then. When it comes here, when it comes to you know landing in Tbilisi, we were we were pretty ready. We brought in our layers just to be uh, just to be um sure. But then, the the first impression was, oh my god, is this is this how it's gonna be for the next six years? Um, because um it was it was pretty chill. It was pretty chilly. And then um and then um uh, we all got together. So it was it was not like we were all by ourselves. We had each other's backs. Um and um uh, it was it was pretty good. Um uh, we we settled in. But then uh, we had only two days of time before the semester had uh, had to had to start. I mean, I mean, uh, two days of time so that we can go to classes because it was all directly offline. So um, we had to quickly um, be ready to um, you know execute everything out and get the stuff that were needed as well. And um, yeah, for me, uh, so when we come from Sri Lanka, we come as groups, yeah, mm-hmm. and there were twelve people in our group and. The 11 before me, they got visa and they went ahead. Whereas right. my visa was late and I came two, two weeks, yeah, two weeks late to uni. So right. I basically, yeah, I traveled alone and 
I took a very long flight. It's had 13 hours of transit. I had to basically sleep in the in an airport. Okay. And when I came here, basically all alone. Thing is, as you come here, uh, they do keep you at immigration bit and question you as to why you're here and all of that. So after passing that, after collecting your baggage and everything, only I um actually got into the country and Anuka, Ashwin's roommate, was yeah. there yeah, because Anuka is uh, a close friend of mine back in Sri Lanka. And so first, as I came, so I came in October, Ashwin came in December. So it wasn't that bad, the chilly. The weather wasn't that bad. But uh, with time, as you as soon as you got out of the airport, okay, I was like, okay, it's colder than what I expected. Then this wasn't even the beginning of winter. Thing is, comparatively to other countries, I'd say uh, it doesn't become very cold during the winter. It's probably like a minus... 19, right. not even 19, minus 13. Minus 13. Yeah. yeah, but at this time it was probably like 12, 11 degrees. Mm -hmm. uh, so, I mean, I had my jackets and everything. So as I came here, I was traveling alone. And so I had to, Anuka had found uh, transportation for me. When I came to my apartment, my other two roommates had already moved in. So they had made dinner and everything for me. So oh, okay. technically... My first day here was pretty good because there were people here who were supporting me and who really helped me get in. And the, straight away the next day, I had to start with uni because I was already late. Really late. Yeah, sure. I had to get the two weeks of work. But he already had his notes. Yeah, all, done there. all yeah. my notes were provided. <laughs> okay, so that was um really different um experiences moving in for you and Ashwin actually when you think about it because um, you had to come in alone and he had to come into the group but on the other hand you had people um, who had dinner ready for you by the time you landed good dinner good dinner right okay yeah. so the so like um so like you moved in right like you moved in and you had the first few days and you guys like um hit the road running right you all had to go to uni um so i didn't like have time to like explore the country or um the city you were in or things like that in the first few days but um like you know on a daily basis right in the first week what were the cultural shocks as per se you know like that's my favorite question to start off with like you know people have these culture shocks as soon as they go into this country so like what do you think was the culture shock that you guys had moving into like what was the thing that stood out like the first thing that stood out when you came in from SL to Georgia? First thing is probably that there were a lot of people walking um, alone at night when there was no problem because back in Sri Lanka after like, right. you know, nine, everyone's scared to walk on the roads. Whereas here, the roads are bustling uh, oh. until like even two two in the morning and anyone can walk alone on the roads like by themselves mm -hmm. without... Uh, being scared about anything. Pretty much they mind their own business. Yeah. Don't they? yeah. People here mind their own business. And relatively, it's, you, know, you feel calm and you feel safe walking oh, alone okay. at night. Whereas so, back in Sri Lanka, you're always looking over your shoulder. Fair enough. What about Ashwin? What did you think? Was it the same? Uh, pretty much the same feeling, dude. Um, Because um, uh, uh, especially, um, you know, you know, especially after some of those birthday parties of our group mates and stuff, and mm -hmm. probably most of them going back home late, um they really don't find a problem i mean yeah we go along with them to you know drop them along but then um it's it's not like you know how how we used to be scared back in sri lanka what would have what would happen if 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 we were going this late back home nothing nothing like that no, and um you have also dogs giving us company um, <laughs> along the way dogs here particular in particular they 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 follow you in case if you you know kind of you know flirt with them in such ways you know um they're actually going to follow you along the way till you, you know, actually go to your destination. So, so it's like a pretty good have, feeling walking in the roads. Um, like stray dogs, uh, like how we have back here. The lots, 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 lots. Lots of stray dogs. And I have a very, uh, <laughs> you know, very lovely experience with dogs here. <laughs> I can really get to that. Maybe. So, you know, that is a, that is a, this is a very recurring theme, you know, like um, almost every other country that I've um, spoken to, right? Belarus, even from even Eastern Europe to... Um, even Japan and you know all these countries they have the same thing you know like the first one of the first things that they feel is they feel safer even even though it's a foreign country they have this sense of security that comes with not which you do not have in your home country so that is a I don't want to get too political or anything but that's something um, you really have to um, um, you really have to um, talk about that I mean that's just 
crazy when the first thing you feel you go to a foreign country and you feel safer than you are in your yeah. home country that's something really wrong there yeah yeah true i mean people indulge in their own in in their own deeds probably i mean i mean they are they're pretty helpful in case something's going on about you know something weird or something that they feel they have to reach out for they will be there for you they support him and at the same time they won't be they won't be giving you weird stares and they won't be like what is this guy doing at this point of time why yeah. is he why is he not white no nothing like that yeah. um racism is something that you find everywhere you go but then um, mm. people here are pretty chill bro um except for some of those people that you find you know at shops probably yeah. you know, when when you go and ask them for you know certain stuff that um that they don't understand mm-hmm. um probably you might have to show them some pictures and stuff but then it's just it's just a minority of them yeah. the rest of the people are pretty friendly bro yeah uh, so like since we're talking about people let's just get into that topic because um obviously the first thing i mean the first thing that hit both of you all was the weather because both of them moved in in winter right? but um what about the people like what do you think like um what would you say was the experience that you had with starting off and then like after two years the differences between um, your initial uh, impression of them and how it is now so uh in each thing is we are in a international faculty here on campus campus right. oh, so yes. our interaction with georgians it's pretty limited it's very limited yeah. to be honest uh-huh. and um, other, other than the day to day meetings you know with shop owners and you know your landlords and all the other people who attend to you know your daily who are part of your daily routine mm-hmm. we don't essentially uh communicate much with georgians but whoever who we have met and whoever who we have talked now i can remember one day um one of my friends he got a package from the postal service and we went to the post office okay. and while standing there a georgian guy he was 18 and mm-hmm. uh, he came up to me and he was like uh, do you know who uh, do you know mahatma gandhi he <laughs> thought we were <laughs> you know mahatma gandhi that's, that's and, the expressions that we yeah. give and uh, he was uh, he was watching a documentary about mahatma gandhi and there's a law so like he was watching a documentary about mahatma gandhi he looked up indians okay he <laughs> was like if you ask him that <laughs> yeah you had like you know tell him that you're from sri lanka yeah, and okay. uh, but then again see it was very friendly the way he approached mm-hmm. us and he was right. ready to learn about our culture even okay. and i probably had because we had to wait for like two and a half hours mm-hmm. we had a conversation there and ended up trying to convince him to come back to sri lanka and you know travel the coast line to take them around as well yeah. so like when you say sri lanka do they um, know the country or is it like you had to say like you know it's close to india it's here like do they have their idea about what sri lanka is most of them don't most of them don't, don't. Them the younger don't. generation does but mm. the older generation here doesn't mm. when you when you explain to them especially taxi drivers you have to be like india sri lanka <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah. yeah i mean like if it was like say a country that was into cricket at least they would have something right because that's yeah, like yeah. one of the only international exposures we have as sri lankans you know ah oh, yes cricket i know sri lankans do cricket can't remember which country it was that they that that the first thing they'd be like ah oh, yes cricket that's that's interesting so like what about you ashwin you have any experiences with people that are georgians um i mean i mean same with same with the thing same with mandri cuz um literally when you go to our university our curriculum is mostly based in english right okay. like beat lectures and also the class the class that we as a group all attend to it's all pretty much within us and the the the, the people the international people more 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 than the locals it's the international people so uh, when you look at our universities there's like three uh, three curriculums one is the georgian you have the russian and also you have the english curriculum so it's okay. it's because we 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 all exposed to that english curriculum we don't get to meet the locals that much mm-hmm. but in case probably we um we we probably when we go to gyms or maybe yeah. maybe um maybe uh, we play at at you know those basketball courts you we, we, a special thing here in georgia is that next to each and every apartment you have like a really beautiful basketball soccer court okay. and you get all kids playing in it yeah there is like a park there's a kids park and then there's the basketball court soccer court and then like everywhere everywhere it's you know everywhere. you know how in back in sri lanka we need to pay for those indoor indoor yes. futsal indoor yes. cricket and stuff like yeah. the hourly 4000 i guess yeah. if i'm not yeah. wrong yeah yeah those kind of stuff here we don't do anything bro we just we just pay for free your charge i mean there's there's nothing better to do here and we make new friends as well most of the, most of the kids know english as well yeah. okay and uh, that's that's pretty much our exposure with them and um, 
they're pretty good they're pretty good the youngsters are pretty chill yeah yeah right. um when you said basketball the first thing that came to mind was um probably these uh the ones who are watching the video um cannot see it but um how, how tall are you ashwin <laughs> <laughs> see i am tall this is ashwin is normally tall <laughs> yeah i know he's not short he's not short but the angle yeah okay. how, what's, what's your, how tall are you ashwin um before six yeah. four right yeah so um he's um more than a foot taller than me and like when i stand next to him right and um so it's like one of my the experiences from like back in classes man back oh in classes God. right <laughs> so i'm like here yeah, and he's like yeah, i'm like yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i just remember that of course you play basketball there. and even mandri is pretty tall but then you don't look tall when you sit next to him exactly <laughs> 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 yeah i mean if you look me nature bro what do, what do you think i look like <laughs> Right. Yeah, so I mean, bas- you know, pretty much basketball and soccer is like big, yeah, football. It's oh big. my god, yeah. Um, you know the rugby World Cups that's going around. Rugby is pretty famous rugby here. Is very rugby is very famous. Okay. Yeah. yeah, they've got a match today as well. Um, yeah. With Wales, I guess. Georgia um, is, um, their rugby team is pretty, pretty good. Pretty good. Mm, pretty okay, good. so you'd say rugby, football, soccer, I mean, sorry, rugby, football, soccer, basketball. Uh, basketball. And they have like a, um, I, I can't remember his name, uh, a guy from Georgia representing NBA as well. Um, oh, okay and also um georgian a, a georgian representing napoli oh ah, yeah um that is so yeah so they're pretty doing good in in international sports cricket is pretty um, less here it's mm-hmm. just that it's just that you know the sri lankans and the indians we like conduct tournaments going along mm-hmm. the way in the university that's when we you know get that exposure of playing cricket other than that you don't see the locals playing cricket it's mostly football rugby basketball mm-hmm. um yes basketball. that's that's about it those are the three major ones Right. So, like, coming back to people, right? So now, um, since you guys talked about being in an international um environment, um, you all have interactions with um mostly un- other Asians like Indians, Pakistanis. Uh, are there other Europeans but, who move in as well? Right. Yeah, mm-hmm. there are quite a few. Um, not in our curriculum, but there are quite a few Russians. There are people mm-hmm. from Ukraine, especially after the whole situation there. Right. And there are quite a lot of Arabs, um, mm-hmm. Indians. people from pakistan like that you know there's quite a good variety yes, <laughs> so like what are how is the interactions with them like i'm pretty sure i call them a uni students yes but then in the day what about the interactions with them honestly very friendly because uh, um now our group uh we have groups like i said you know of 12 people each like mm-hmm. that there are groups from other countries also right so like we have friends from i have friends who are from egypt i have friends who are from india from um, Qatar from Oman all of these countries there are people and very friendly mm-hmm. but one thing that i have realized uh, especially after coming from the local levels to the curriculum we are pretty old compared to them <laughs> yeah. Yeah. okay yeah because yeah. these guys are they are 18 and 19 and here we are uh... 22 the and... ones doing neat in india as well they are like 17 18 right oh. um, and uh... they're done with that and they directly come to ug they come for you know mm-hmm. um, the undergraduate here in yeah. georgia and stuff they're pretty they're pretty young it's um, us that because yeah. we go through the local a levels in london a levels are pretty young as well london a levels are pretty young also yeah. it's just I mean, us it's a, it's a thing man like um even we have foreign students here and like it's a thing oh my god you guys are still 18 19 oh my god you guys will graduate by the time like you know the age that i am in now okay. 22 23 right <laughs> It's, it's crazy man like you realize how old you are <laughs> yeah 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 um okay that's that's cool i mean um i'm i i'm you're talking about people from egypt and all i'm thinking about is yeah i have someone else for my next uh, episode <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, that's right yeah uh, before we move on to language i just want to ask this have you ever had um negative experiences with people like um not on an individual basis but you know like the general thing like the way yeah. they speak yeah so um you know uh, the tone that the normal georgians have when they have like a conversation okay the way they converse is pretty rude yeah they're very loud loud aggressive okay that's that's like impression we get because yeah that's the impression you get but that's not te- technically what they are trying to say trying to say that's it's not what they're trying to say and i think it's the same uh, for them also when we are speaking in our language mm-hmm. I think that it's different. It's a, yeah, yeah. yeah, they think it's a, it's just a whole different uh, thinking pattern. Yeah. All right. Yeah. 
so like we speak my... softly we they find it offensive and they speak loud and we find it a bit rude is that how it it's is? like it's like they're, they're, they're assuming that we are telling secrets so that they don't understand uh, something like that. then we we assume that they're actually being very arrogant and they're trying to um actually uh, you know curse us or something yeah. something like that and speak louder than us yeah like oh, okay. so it's it's see it's they it's not coming from no one's coming from a bad place or a wrong place it's just again a difference in the whole culture yeah culture, yes yes i mean um yeah generally asians are more soft spoken when you compare with i think um australians or uh, the western countries especially i guess it comes with the um culture of being allowed to speak or you know heard yeah. so yes. we just end up being you know, more passive it's it's a thing it's a thing i'm um, not no. across but it's it's you can notice it among people right so um but have you ever had like a racist incident or anything that you would like um not really i mean because um of anything like that occasionally that person was walking down the road you know they nudge into you and they walk off mm-hmm. or um you i mean you experience it quite a lot if in the nightlife of georgia Okay. As, uh, now we, I have gone to few clubs here, mm-hmm. and some clubs are very accepting, and you know they'll happily take. But there are other clubs where they'll take a whole line of Georgians who yeah. are Caucasian, who are white, basically. Mm-hmm. And when it comes to you, you look at the camera, and they're like, "No, you step aside," and oh. then they take a few others. And so it's there. There are a few right. clubs that are, um. exclusively georgian white only. oh okay yeah. is are you talking about white or like um so uh, so is uh, there a thing against black with any language i mean they would they would understand that they're the locals mm-hmm. um so it's exclusively georgians i would yeah. say more than whites right. even the internationals i don't i don't know if they have a thing with them but then they're pretty exclusive for georgians mm-hmm. but see, i uh, this is where the, the reason i say white is because i we we have a common we, friend mm-hmm. uh, shiva and <laughs> <laughs> when shiva goes shiva, shiva, shiva okay okay so when shiva goes he can go <laughs> that's, go. that's the reason that i said like, right uh, okay <laughs> but, but uh, yeah it's uh, right that that's <laughs> okay i guess so then that means maybe other europeans also will be more accepted compared to yeah. right yeah. right are there black people they are commonly i'm talking about africans yeah. i don't know oh, is that students in okay, students yeah nigerians students. yeah yeah right. even the i think we we'll, we we'll talk about this later but the whole religious aspect mm-hmm. uh the more catholic side or the more yeah more catholic there are only a few catholic churches here mm-hmm. and in those catholic churches also a majority of the services led by um black people all mm. oh, right and yeah it's i mean again going to church is a it's a how how, how could i say it? it's a melting pot of different cultures mm-hmm. there are uh, there are blacks there are then us mm-hmm. brown people there are the white people and everyone is there yeah so that is predominantly where i have seen mainly um black people but also our, our unions has few and the other unit the tbc state university as quite a big uh, population oh, so like they have like a foreign intake um, quota yeah. thing like right oh, yeah so um yeah uh, we sp- talked about the people and um the um we sp- talked about um the sports there, there right so like um the next thing that you guys have to obviously face on um a daily basis is uh, going to be the food so i mean it's, it's it's again one of one of the one of my favorite things to talk about because uh, i have listened to so many different experiences about the food right like for example um, but but um, what's common across all episodes all countries is at one point you miss you miss sri lankan of, of course you miss home you miss sri lankan food and especially when you know go to a <laughs> country where they have bland food um just just putting it out there <laughs> i'm not being specific or anything but um yeah i mean that's that's common across everything but then again people learn to enjoy the food um you know there so what do you, what would you all tell about like starting off and how it is now bro you don't you don't understand the importance of a rice and you know five curry five curries around it until you come to a you know come to a country out of sri lanka be it georgia be it anywhere mm-hmm. i mean 
you will then only you understand the importance of you know having it just right next to your wooden table mm. and you know that that feeling is just like huge i mean we get our summer vacation for like two months right like in mm. july till the um till till september that's when we go and grind bro that's when we go <laughs> and you know literally have the best of best yeah, I think all of us have increased like five kilos up literally. coming back <laughs> my god yeah uh, uh, yes. <laughs> we came to sri lanka back in the uh, summer and we, we we feel proud about it actually because uh, we know that we're gonna we're gonna go down in weight the time you know when next July comes up and then, yeah. Let's just talk about here. Um, if you're lover of meat and cheese and wine, this is the country this for the you. Country. This mm-hmm. is the country for you because uh, che- wine. It's a lesser known fact actually. Wine originated in Georgia. In Georgia. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. Wait. That's really interesting. Wine yeah, originated yeah. in Georgia. Yeah. know this yeah. and um, i mean there is this huge um, statue right in the middle of tbilisi called the mother of georgia, mother of georgia. and okay. she has one uh, on one it's like the statue of liberty but on one hand she has a, a chalice of with mm-hmm. wine okay. on the other hand a sword sword okay sword because georgia used to be a center where a lot of countries invaded over time especially russia and mm. from the middle east and from china and even from all around yeah mm-hmm. so wine is and also personally saying wine here is brilliant fantastic brilliant, brilliant. got a lot of varieties a lot of varieties i mean if it and if it's where wine originated it has to be right yeah and uh as for food thing is they have the there is a um, so they have a food called kinkali which is like uh, dumplings mm-hmm. yeah. and then there is kachapuri which is basically cheese bread kachapuri and uh, biryani biryani means beans, biryani, biryani. Yeah. lobiyani not biryani biryani <laughs> <laughs> in georgia how uh, you do very well yeah lobiyani lobiyani is uh, basically beans okay yeah. um, it's, it's 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 a happy news for the vegetarians they can that's that's a very popular um, you know a, a food option for them but see okay. for us you can eat that food only um for a certain amount of time after yeah. that it because it's get fed up of it it's just too much yeah And so like, that's like um, so this is what the georgians have on a um, daily basis like how we have rice and curry lubiani yeah. and uh, kachapuri and yeah yeah i mean we we are still in all like uh, how do they even have that on a daily basis i mean it's it's really hard because it's literally bread right it's like bread and, and the cheese also doesn't taste like uh, you know the happy cow cheese we mm-hmm. have back in sri lanka okay. no 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 cheese here is pretty popular but then uh, we, we we sri lankans most of us don't like the taste of it from what i've heard from a lot you know telling us um it's not that popular but then um you do get indian shops here though you do get um, you know mm-hmm. shops around uh, where people you know come here and you know they start over businesses those are running pretty well as well because um, there's a lot of indians more than sri lankans in georgia when you compare um in the university so um you do have uh, cuisines you do have indian cuisines they're doing pretty well you mean like indian restaurants indian restaurants yes yes oh, okay that's pretty closer oh, to the yeah. unions but we don't have to go um you so, know uh, we so, don't so you're for... telling me that there are um indians who have established businesses there who are not there for studies exactly yeah. exactly so are they and you know i uh, you know, i've known some of the people um some of the students and some of the parents who have come over and you know made like a small business who could be for a temporary period until mm-hmm. they find out their son and daughter are doing well what they do is they come up they start like small small businesses doing small small stuff like fish bun sini sambal bun right and patties and stuff they sell it over you know instagram pages and stuff oh so, so is this like um this is not like shops as per se it's just um small things like there are shops right? also but this kind of thing also does happen yeah all right so like what like is it um easy like to come in and start working cuz you need like a work visa and things like that is it or is it just yeah. thing is we we aren't really sure about that side of it because right. uh we mainly for us it's yeah. student visa really yeah. focus so in your student visa you guys don't have any um allocation to work right i don't we, i don't think we have the working permit no, to uh um, you know as, certain um, hours yeah. a week or thing like that no. no but there are people who like um like sri lanka's uber eats there are apps mm-hmm. called like uh volt 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 Bold and bold. Yes, uh, this was told to me by, if I'm not mistaken, Hemaka. Hemaka. Yeah? Yes. No, not Hemaka. It was uh, Latvia. <laughs> Latvia. No, Latvia. Harry. Harry. Yes, Harry. Oh yeah. Bold and bold. I remember that. <laughs> oh, so it's a, it's a it's a Eastern European thing. Yeah. Yeah. 
right. so there are people who do work for that and it may be on the cycle it may be honestly walking also because people do deliver food walking yeah okay yeah. <laughs> you can walk on the road with that huge bag on the back right? okay uh, and uh, yeah so there are people who uh, do that because uh, often when we even order food once or twice there's this guy who has come who's from a you know who's in his 60th year okay. and he's doing on the side mm. uh, so like you can um earn that pay also right okay um, yeah. Yeah. yeah that's great i mean like uh, talking about delivery um what about like are you guys allowed to get licenses and like is it necess- like it's not necessary i mean if you're in campus right but how does that work i mean the sri lanka license would do good uh, really? so what we Not yeah, what we know it was we bought our licenses from okay. Sri Lanka. Mm-hmm. And whenever there's like a drive or we need to go somewhere, we take all the group mates around, you know, mm-hmm. see the city. Um we 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 use our own licenses. Yeah, so basically it works like um it's valid for a year since you enter the country. Oh, okay. Yeah. So say I entered last October, it will be valid until this October, but then again I went back 2 mm-hmm. months ago so it got renewed when I came again. Oh, that yes. that's that's interesting. Yeah. yeah 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 so it's valid for a year uh-huh. so if you if you are constantly moving back and forth then uh, it's going to be like an auto renew yeah. like an fd so like you you yeah. can rent you can enter vehicle and um, just yeah. go yeah i mean there's oh. there's sri lankans here who actually you know bought their own bought vehicle their own, own vehicles like bmw and stuff bro like, yeah oh, for real is it that cheap yeah, or real, is it just uh... it's second hand it's pretty cheap it's pretty cheap okay like not uh, like the style taxes we have in you know lanka that brings me to um, finances which is like um, the most important thing i guess for people who actually want to come in to study um that that's probably going to be the thing first thing on their mind right so like if you are telling me that people can afford to buy a bmw even though if it's second hand you know like you can't think of even second hand vehicle man in sri lanka it's just you know yeah. um, it doesn't the, there's the, there's no correlation between cash and what you get for the cash so how does it work there like wait what's the currency in georgia again is the euro no it's called the lari georgian lari lari is like l a r abbreviated as gel abbreviated as gel like g e l g e l lari abbreviated as gel that's literally yeah. georgian lari so it's like g e ah, okay. from georgian and then l from lari right yeah. so so is it, so is it like uh, rupees and cents lari and tetri. lari and tetri tetri okay that's that's nice okay <laughs> so how so, does it work like it's like um for the rupee it's like 126 6 yeah uh, 126 rupees for a lari lari for a lari okay. it was it was 61 when i came uh, <laughs> for me 61 when i came and then uh, you know so we like went, 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 went <laughs> and then russia ukraine went <laughs> <laughs> that's when that's when uh, um, you know all tables turned and you know and it's it's literally double yes yes it is my god yeah. Yeah. So like um you guys are not allowed to work but um so I have to um what about the expenses like the um living cost how does it work like food um rent 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 is probably the biggest expense yeah. we have here rent is pretty expensive pretty expensive to be mm-hmm. honest because we don't have uh, hostel facilities here nobody encourages us to you know use hostels here mm-hmm. so everyone every sri lankan that i know like whoever comes to georgia they have to go for an apartment okay and apartment business here is huge i mean yeah. um, you have so many options and and the prices are pretty high as well 2 bhk b3 bhk everything's going high these it, days uh, i'd say like a 2 bhk is about 1000 dollars a month yeah easily easy 1000 dollars a month yeah. okay is it is it for foreigners is it uh, that or is it like no. generally general in, in general because the whole situation here is um, so the population of Georgia used to be I'm not I'm really not sure of the number but after the whole Ukraine and Russia situation the population here doubled essentially migration and because, migration. migration and because of that the um, supply it's basically supply and demand yep. the demand for um Apart- apartments, apartments increase increase and people will do will pay anything to be honest to get an apartment so right. obviously uh, the landlords are going to you know on that wagon and yep. increase their rents yep. I so, see. So, that, so have you seen? Have you um, see, been like experienced the increase? Like Ashwin has been here for like two years, right? So, have you like experienced the increase? It was yes. Um, it was um, because um, I'll tell you mine. So basically, we started off with a two BHK with Tanuka, mm. was it? Yeah, Tanuka, and then 
that was uh, that was around 450 500 which okay. was 250 for, for us but then now we are living in a 3 bhk that's going at about 1000 okay so, so dude, um, that 1000 a month is just um 1000 a month still is a huge expense for a student i would yeah, say yeah yeah i would rather spend it on something that i would like to eat or something that i would like to buy or something to wear or mm-hmm. you know that's that's the sad part um yeah, but then the thousand dollars a month. How much is it in rupees? Three hundred and twenty thousand. Three hundred and thirty thousand a month. Yo, I, yeah. I can't fathom it, man. This is us off as well. So that is um that's for him. For me, I, this is worse. I'm in a four bedroom apartment. Okay. Uh, four other guys, and ours is thousand six hundred a month. So it's four hundred dollars each, each per person. This, this is just yeah. Yeah. yeah i mean and and then you have your additional expense what about it does this include electricity water utilities and no, no, that's excluded that's excluded um when it comes to winter you know when we, when you start you know uh, turning on the heaters and stuff that's going to go up again because um, uh, that's right. that and when it comes to summer air conditioners but then we normally don't use it very rarely but then winter because that's the predominant weather here mm-hmm. utilities itself holds an expense yeah. so um so essentially Utility. another fifty dollars yep. for yep. utilities per Utility. person. All right. So then what about other expenses? Food and stuff? Daily food, like if you're groceries. Yeah. If you're cooking for yourself, you're good. You're good. You're good. Okay. Because it's, you can honestly save a lot of money. Yeah. But mm-hmm. uh, with uni coming after full day of uni, you're really, really tired. Some days you just can't be bothered mm-hmm. cooking. Mm-hmm. At that point, then when you order out, you won't be able to order out for a whole oh, month, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. So, yeah, it's, it's so, a very fine. You have to know when to order out and when you should actually exactly. be cooking. Exactly. So, do you, yeah. like, uh, do you notice that most Sri Lankans and um, students end up cooking for themselves rather than you? They do. They do. They do. They do. Sure. They do. Did you guys know yeah. how to cook when you all moved in? Who did? I knew. I didn't. <laughs> And did I didn't learn? know cooking while I came here. I I had to learn it here. Now I'm pretty good. But then um I, I had to learn it. Um I had to learn it here. Yeah. We we needed to survive, bro. I mean, we needed to um, necessity. Can't be stuff. Um, yes, yes. Yeah. I mean, Things for yeah. us, my my other roommate, he's like a brilliant cook. Oh yeah. Chirat is Chirat. Brilliant mm-hmm. cook. So he and I also knew some stuff. I I didn't know rice and curry really. <laughs> like, he knew that part. I knew the other, you know, pasta and stuff like that. Okay. So all of us together, and yeah, we survived. <laughs> we survived. Yeah. So Chirat is a good cook, and people do come over a lot to our place to eat because of that. All our friends and them, like okay. Ashin, all of them have eaten from him multiple times because. Every he cooks really well. Yeah. So like yeah. you cook for like a um, couple of days and keep it and then do or like you can't be cooking every day, right? I mean, we tried that. We did try that, but uh, I normally do that because it's oh, yeah. two of us. Maybe it's hard for them because there's four people four, in it. Okay. So imagine nice. buying a kilo of chicken, right? That goes that, on for that, like finishes, that finishes in one meal. That's the only one meal. Four people, ah. four boys. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so like you have, have you put a roster? Huh? So you no. Roster? Okay. It's a really uh, cool thing. So what we do is there's Splitwise. an app called Splitwise mm. on our phones. Okay. And okay. whenever we buy groceries, say I buy groceries today, I upload it on the app. The app divides equally, equally. to the four people. Oh, okay. And then there's someone else you buy like that. Everyone buys and uploads it onto that. So mm. you have an idea of who's who has bought and who is yet to buy and stuff like that. So oh, it's okay. pretty cool. So like a lot of you use this app? Uh, I, yeah. I mean, it's a new thing. This also we got to know from one of our seniors, mm, and right. from us, a few other people are also using. Mm. So it's, mm-hmm. it's, that, that's, it's pretty. That's interesting, right? So we spoke about food and um, uh, the living costs and how um uh, it is to manage finances. Or then, like we also realized that it's not like um easy to work if you're going to go there as a student, right? So um before we moved on to the religious aspect, I just wanted to hit back on the language, right? So educate me <laughs> so the language here is georgian or as they call it kartulis Ka? and uh, kartulis kartulis so that's georgian for georgian yeah <laughs> <laughs> okay and uh, yeah so gamar joba is hello logar is how are you madoba mm-hmm. is thank you nakhwam this is 
goodbye. Uh, so essentially, when you meet someone, I mean, I always answer my phone calls now saying "Gamar jo ba me gubaro." Gamar jo ba me gubaro or "Gamar jo ba bicho." Bicho, bicho is boy. Boy. Okay. So it's boy. Boy. Don't put explicit. Boy. Yeah. yeah, I don't have to censor that, right? Yeah. Cool. So wait, um, um, or is it saying "Gamar jo ba"? Gamar jo ba. Gamar jo ba. Gamar jo ba.
yeah, to an extent yeah to an extent because because uh, what they would say is in case if you're going for an internship here you might need a bit of georgian here and there when you're taking history and stuff because mm-hmm. when you get you know in case you get older patients they would they would be more fluent with georgian than english so when they when they're saying about what their history was what symptoms they were having in case for those instances we might need to know a bit of georgian here and there so like um how about the people there right so like do they all speak georgian do they all speak english or like um interacting with them how does it work everyone here speaks georgian i mean the um, natives here speak georgian and the younger generation only mostly knows english mm-hmm. the older generation yeah. doesn't uh, really know english so yeah. to converse with them we will we do need to know a bit of georgian but also at the same time right now russian is also being spoken in japan Oh, okay so like um, uh-huh. like um, Ashwin said right so if you're going to hospitals to um, do the internships and stuff you'll need to have a bit of knowledge about the uh, language but um, so yeah I mean that's the thing same thing right most of these places the old people they um, uh, tend to not have uh, that much of a grasp of English while the younger generation of course they are um, more fluent in English right? but they do speak Georgian right like the younger generation is not like they are moving no, away from the language they do not at all right not at all here this country they embrace their language mm-hmm. like even mm-hmm. even in the malls like mm-hmm. popular brands like zara h&m bershka all of these mm-hmm. the name lines are in georgian mm-hmm. so, right mm-hmm. so it's like walking to one golf place in sri lanka and having all of those uh, names in, in single and yeah i yeah, see whereas, Yeah, they, they embrace. They're not ashamed of the language, which I have a feeling Sri Lanka is. Yeah, kind of. we we have that thing. I mean, but also I think I just want to say, um, I was saying how Russian is being spoken here. You yeah. hear Russian, right? At the same time, a Georgian person does hear someone speaking Russian. Mm-hmm. Probably go birds. <laughs> really? Yes, <laughs> because here yeah, they are. very anti russian mm. they are pro they have had a history they have had a proper they have, history they have russia has tried to invade georgia multiple times even oh, right. recent in 2013 or 2008 also oh. they yeah, tried to invade. um so they are not the biggest fans of russia or russians mm-hmm. so whoever is coming from russia also is now adapting to speak georgian all right but they do accept jo- russians um For, for studies and stuff but they're not a big fan of russia that's okay well, you have that in all right okay so that, that's interesting about the english so like um can you like you guys um speak in georgian uh, like okay okay gamar joba me gobaro rogor har and you can reply saying karga or kar karga is good good okay. i'm doing good mm-hmm. and me sri lanki dan wise i'm sri lankan yeah and um uh what is like if you go to a shop you can as uh, ragir says or uh, romelius that's how much is how that how much is that oh, okay uh ari says what is that um uh, so these are the basic stuff that we learn to go through our day to day life yeah mm-hmm. the ones that we need the ones and also as also most of the stuff that's being sold uh, most of it has georgian written in it more than english Oh, okay. um, so, um so probably what helps us out is google yeah. lens so what we do is we literally scan the thing off right. and then translate it directly we see how what when is the expiry and what what are the contents in it all the ingredients and stuff so lucky in that way but then yeah they they do have you know everything written in georgian yeah, like, even even the known ones this is a red book can here there's a red book can here for example and at the back all of the details here are written in georgian, georgian. In georgian. okay Okay so I mean that's that reflects what you said about having even the malls having everything in georgia right yeah exactly um so just um, out of topic a bit but um, is it um, i don't know like you know is it more towards samsung android or apple ios 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 are you the country the country ios ios for sure, right. iOS for sure. Everyone yeah. here has a Apple phone. <laughs> Recently, we uh, we went Bruno for Mars. a concert. Yeah, Bruno Mars. Okay. Bruno Mars actually had a concert. Yeah. Oh, had a concert yes, yes, I saw your stories. Yeah. So we were pretty much at the back on the top. So when you look down, you can see everyone has iPhones. iPhones. <laughs> and <laughs> all those are also Pros, not like the normal 13s ones. It's actually the 13 Pro, the 13 Pro Maxes. You know, you can mm-hmm. actually see those. Yeah. 
to lenses yeah, yeah that's okay right. so that brings me a bit back to finances right so like if you were working in georgia and if you were living in georgia would the um, uh, finances uh, work out because like i know the rent is high but that's when you think about it from our point i mean okay the rent is high for everyone keep that aside but what about the daily expenses like would that work out if you were working in georgia what's this i mean of course you all don't have an idea about salary scale but like how does it work we we know a few people who are doing um like apartment uh, businesses and stuff like that okay and what they earn i would say yes you can yes okay. you can if you get a job here you can finance yourself but not for university but you can finance your daily needs yeah for sure all right i mean yeah i mean you told me that you people even have bought cars so that means uh, some things are cheap some things are not but if you were working in georgia it would work out yeah 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 it does it doesn't have to be work also could be something because assume you you are sri lankan and you are you are pretty popular here and you know a lot of contacts you could be one of those agents for the real estate agents here mm-hmm. who could bring in students and get into apartments and you know give okay. them you know contacts for apartments that's a source of income as well oh, so okay. so many people do it here uh, mostly seniors yeah. um and um you can do that, that that pays you off good as well oh. um for the long run yeah oh, that that's interesting so um talking about bruno, bruno mars right that brings me into my uh, next um topic right actually pop culture so um you told us like how it is um how the culture is embraced right in georgia you have people embracing georgian culture so um before we head into um you know english culture hollywood and all of that what about the georgian culture you know songs movies plays books how does what what would you say uh, have you ever been like exposed to these georgian songs and georgian yeah no um i have i actually have man that i like it's called mugzabrebi uh and their music uh basically georgian music is mainly folk songs folk tunes okay and it's either folk tunes or it's um, rock bit rock. of rock there is a bit of rock, bit of rock. but more uh, what do you call it? techno mm. like clubs or techno. yeah there is pretty good there's a club in shilang uh, not shilang sorry, in joy <laughs> and uh, recently there was a rating out for the top 10 clubs in the world and mm-hmm. this club ranked number 10 in the mm-hmm. entire world uh-huh. called asian uh-huh. and that club is it's pretty exclusive and you can and that's located basically we had the stadium where we uh, watched bruno mars mm-hmm. underground yeah. oh, okay a, there's a abandoned swimming pool mm-hmm. so that is now converted into a club right okay. and uh, yeah so in the main most of the clubs and nightlife it's all techno music mm-hmm. it's all i mean you know the bomb mm-hmm. bop their head uh, it was <laughs> which is not really something <laughs> and uh, but yeah now sira is a again my roommate is a huge um, uh, metal and metal rock, rock fan mm-hmm. he, he can play yeah. so we tend to go out to a few clubs and there are different different people playing like yeah. he has gone out uh, to a underground rock um thing mm-hmm. and you know he comes and he tells about okay this is the type of music that is done there All but right. uh, dj music is probably a huge thing and there are lots of yeah. djs from georgia All right. so like um, they have their own movies also right like what is it called like i mean do they have uh, actually uh, on the side of arts they're not that they do they do do a lot of arts and dramas and stuff yeah. but mm-hmm. when it comes to movies not movies, that i've been know of movies honestly i haven't even seen um on the like the in the movie theaters mm-hmm. it's advertised uh-huh. even there are not many movies not like uh, in sri lanka mm-hmm. but uh, mm-hmm. for them the cultural aspect because george in the there's a they have a very specific dance that mm-hmm. is done in basically all events and it's honestly it's mesmerizing mm-hmm. when you watch it because it's a they ballet. incorporate ballet, ballet they incorporate um how do you know like army training i don't know how to even say army like training fighting, fight, fighting basically it's sword fighting and all of those okay. fencing and stuff okay yeah. it's a it's very beautiful mm-hmm. but it's also very unique mm. the clothes they wear while is doing it and the music is also folk songs are out of this world yeah okay so you guys um i, I would ask you i would ask for you guys to dance and show us but 
I'm. <laughs> yes, I mean, that's interesting. Yeah. So you tell me, like, there's more of um, actually the Hollywood and English songs is more popular. Right? What about yeah. um, you know, K-pop, anime? Anime is probably because there are shops that sell anime merchandise, and I'm recently also there was a huge billboard that came in front of Uni mm-hmm. on the bus stop with K-pop idols and the girls in our group are all the way walking <laughs> off the pillows. <laughs> Honestly, don't understand the attraction, <laughs> but uh, whatever flows that boat. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let's not let's not comment on those, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because Obviously, I don't I don't want I don't want to limit my audience. You know, <laughs> we all we all love K-pop. Yeah, no, no, nothing against yeah. K-pop. Yeah. Peace. <laughs> Oh, what do they do? They do this thing. <laughs> I hope I got that right. Okay. <laughs> um, that's yeah, interesting, interesting. Um, all right. So um, let's get into um religion. We were talking about religion before, right? Like, so I don't really focus much on religion because it's um, especially for like you know when we are um foreigners living there, it's not a big thing. But um, just for the sake of curiosity, right? of course, there's Christians and like um like there's different sectors, right? And uh, so, uh, Christians here, the church here is basically mainly the Georgian Orthodox Church, right? Which is a very um, ritualistic, a very spirit. How would I say? It's, yeah, the they're very um, heavy on the rituals, and it's a very different aspect to what uh, I have experienced in Sri Lanka. So I am an Anglican. Mm-hmm. Uh, which is also separate from Catholicism. Mm-hmm. And here it's mainly the Georgian Orthodox Church and then you, there's the Armenian Apostolic Church also. Mm-hmm. And both churches, they speak the same thing as Christianity because it's a type of Christianity. Mm-hmm. But the way they carry out their day-to-day activities is much more different mm-hmm. to what it is. So personally, I when I first went into a Georgian church, I didn't really feel comfortable there because it was a completely foreign aspect uh, and I'm a person who to church many times back in Sri Lanka. So, the you know, it gets a bit used to in, because they speak in ancient Greek Orthodox and uh, sorry, okay. in ancient, in ancient Armenian. So, and the churches are very dark and it's lit with candles. Okay. So, that aspect is a newer aspect. Uh, for me mm-hmm. personally also there are catholic churches and i do go to a catholic church uh Marjani. in marjani uh, about yeah, just about out of hour. curiosity ashwin you was go yes ashwin. i was gonna i was gonna tell you that actually because um, when it comes to my case uh, yes i'm so supposed to go to covid yeah yeah you don't get a lot of covid here okay. um there is this is, um krishna center uh, mm-hmm. krishna shrine uh, Sar- Sarjashvili. Mm-hmm. That's pretty far actually from where we live. Mm-hmm. Uh, we had to take a bus and then a metro as well. Um, it's 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 only one of the you know one of those few days we probably would have gone. But then other than that, if I really need that you know inner peace in me, or I need to do you know something before the exams, you know where you want to freshen up yourself, I would probably go with Mandri to uh, the church that he goes to. Oh, okay. Pretty good. Pretty good. I mean, I mean the the melodies that they have at the start. Uh, oh, what yeah. do you call it? Hymns. Yeah, exactly. Um, um, uh, pretty, I mean, pretty peaceful, pretty serene. There's a lot going on here, so you uh, you have to find a place where you are and detach yourself a bit, and detach yourself yeah. where you can actually just revel in this inner peace exactly. that you really want. Exactly. And church is one place that I find it, right. and very happy that I was able to find this place here. Yeah. And yeah. Actually, happy Vashti now. Yeah. Happy I just tags along. Just well, tags along well, well, are there any mosques around? I mean, you know, like. For my there is one mosque. so my uh, other roommate Malik he's uh, he he's a Muslim mm-hmm. and he like even yesterday uh, yesterday on last Friday he went uh, for Jumma okay to the mosque so there's if I'm not wrong there's only one mosque here mm-hmm. but the entire country like, or the city no in the, in the, city, okay. the capital All because right. uh, there are a lot of people from Turkey and from uh-huh. uh, Middle East Middle East mm-hmm. who are here. Mm-hmm. So especially I can remember during Ramazan, the so the uh, mosque is at the top of a hill, and okay. the mosque was going. There were people along the hill, right to the base of the hill. 
Uh, like going, going. Not going in, they were praying on the road because there was no space in the it's, mosque. Oh, you mean there's that many Muslims there and there's only that one small mosque? Exactly. Oh, so, okay. So it's, it's, he was talking about that he got to know that there's another new mosque also now, mm-hmm. which I'm uh, not sure whether he went there or the other place. Right. But yeah, so there's a mosque, so there's there are church. Yeah, that's because so yeah, I mean, like um, I think you mentioned it once before. Also, like you know, the Georgians are pretty spiritual people, right? Yeah. So yeah. and and like I think even we are, we are right. Like we are close to our faith. Mm-hmm. I mean, when the way we're brought up in Sri Lanka and stuff, most of us are. So um, like you said, you know, especially far from home, I think that would be a place where you can actually like detach yourself and um, take some time for yourself in amidst the entire you know foreign place that you're in right so it's very important i would say to have a place like that that you can go to and um so moving on from um, religion i'd like to talk about um the country a bit right because i generally just again for the sake of curiosity you are you guys are in tbilisi the capital of the country so what about the entire country like um are there other cities around and like have you guys traveled around the country like during vacations or stuff how does it how is it yeah we actually uh we went on a ski trip to uh Bakuriani. what is Bakuriani. sorry ba? uh, skiing trip baku Bakuri. Bakuriani. so it's uh dude a lot of these things just sound like buriani to me <laughs> is, is, is that a common um, suffix or so, something? Uh, yeah, a lot of words now that you say it, a lot of words finish with n-i n-i yeah all right yeah. Yeah. okay yeah now that you say it. yeah but oh uh, bakuriani we went on a skiing trip it was mm-hmm. uh, my first time skiing ashwin's second, second time so <laughs> You've been skiing and before in Georgia? It was like a, uh, not properly skiing. It was just that I went to another place as well. <laughs> There's another place called Gudauri, which okay. ends with an R. Oh, thank God. Uh, <laughs> uh, that was my first skiing experience. And, um, mm-hmm. you know, putting on those big boots and, you know, skiing, falling. That's like very huge, heavy. very heavy boots. You very know, heavy. That's right. an experience. Mm-hmm. And Bak- uh, so, uh, very interesting story. We were, so in Bakuriani, we were, Ashin also wrapped up, you know, put on his boots. I also put on my right. boots. We put the ski lift mm-hmm. right under the top. Now, I, I started coming down slowly. It mm-hmm. came to a point where there's like a fork in the um, hill. Okay. And I was right there at the beginning of the fork. I had come down slowly and I had fallen there. And you fell. I, I fell. Because okay. For skiing, I'm just figuring this stuff out. And I fell there. And I'm just now seated nicely on the floor. And I can hear from the back someone, Amandri, get out of the way. <laughs> Actually, he went through. He went through the fork. <laughs> he went through the fork and he's now caught in the nets. And that's that's just... actually the snow bikes. Snow uh, bike? No, no, this is on the hill. You, oh, you mean when they were falling? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah actually, you're like talking about them. No, no. Oh, that's another story. I forgot about that. <laughs> Ashwin God. comes skiing down straight through the fork and he okay. got in the nets there. Okay. So, zero control. Zero control. <laughs> Second, same trip. Okay, we got jet skis. Uh, me and Chiratwa on one, me and Ashwin Jira. and Dhiraya on another one. And we were basically uh, not jet skis, snowmobiles. Uh, snow, snow, snowmobiles, yeah. Snowmobiles, yeah. Snow? And, uh, snow what? Snowmobile. Ah, snowmobiles, snowmobile. okay, okay. Snow bikes. Snow bikes, yeah. Right, right, okay. And we we tried to race each other. Mm. And uh, <laughs> so initially, um, uh, they were in, we were in the lead. Yeah. Then mm-hmm. we stopped and we switched riders. Yeah. So then I I took over in our vehicle and Ashwin took, took over in his, his vehicle. Way. Ashwin, he, <laughs> he, he the, the only thing I saw was the accelerator. Yeah. I never knew there was a thing called brake. Okay, okay. okay. This, and my left hand was like, yeah, you stay aside. I'm I'm gonna do this. And I was the only thing was handling it was my right hand onto the accelerator. And then I'm coming on flew. Back. Like, this fellow flew. He flew <laughs> straight into a board. Uh, into into oh. a board. A, 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 a pole. A pole. Okay. Okay. 
Okay, I was coming from the back and then Arshin is there one second, next second it's just snow everywhere. <laughs> okay, there's a recording of him just blasting through it and straight into the tires that were around the pole. I saw Ashin's legs going like this. He Imagine did, me doing a balti. Oh my god. He like, did a full uh, balti. No, I, went... I'm definitely putting this on the pod. You can send me the video. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, just, I'm, I'm just imagining these scenes from these cartoons, you know, where we have these. You know, like this. <laughs> I was I was behind this and I didn't know how to react. I just quickly slowed down because I saw both of their legs, legs. him and Dira. They are legs in the sky. Both of us are pretty tall. So. And both are tall. Dira is also tall. Both of them just went flying. Oh my god. I quickly stopped it. I got everyone who was watching this came running shouting. Right, and this right. fellow was nicely there in the snow. This, this is what happens. This is what happens, Ashwin, when you speed, right? You need to control your speed. <laughs> Bro, it was snowing. <laughs> it was it was not a road. It was a, it was it was the surrounded was by. Mm-hmm. Was here. Was here. Oh, okay. I just had to go straight. <laughs> I just didn't know how to go straight. I just had to take the other way around. Right, right. Yeah, that costed us also a bit, but it was one hell of an experience. One hell of an experience. Yeah, very memorable trip, to be honest. God. King. That and, was and, during our vacations, Ralph. Um, this was um, this winter was in vacation. winter vacation, February. 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 We got like you know two and a half, three weeks. Some right. of some of the Sri Lankans, what they do is they they go back to Sri Lanka, okay, and you know make a visit, refresh themselves uh, themselves up. But then we thought it was it was a very short vacation to make a visit to Sri Lanka. So we were like we stayed back. We thought of making more trips and you know exploring the places around. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And uh, what are the other places? Any other places? We went to a place called Parvani Lake. Parwani Lake. Parwani Lake and See, another, uh, another another Buryani, yes. Okay. <laughs> Parwani. Okay. Par- yeah. Parwani Lake right. and uh, the Dashbashi Dash Canyon. Canyon. That's like a diamond bridge. Yeah. Huge, uh-huh. huge bridge. Yeah, it's a huge bridge and there's a it's a diamond in the, shape. In the in, center. In a restaurant in the center. It's floating. It's floating. Okay. And... That's okay. Interesting. <laughs> <laughs> interesting and yeah that was that was my first trip here that was with them after that only we went to Bakuriani mm-hmm. then we have gone to Signagi it's mm-hmm. called uh, <clears throat> it's called the city of love here mm-hmm. it's like a mm-hmm. small rem- uh, I won't say remote but when you're going it's located on top of a rock more or less it's got some Brazil vibes in it yeah if you found it Brazil somehow. okay like, Brazil. like Rio like Re- literally like Rio. Rio yeah uh-huh. and it's like yeah. Okay, and it, it's a pretty nice and very beautiful town very beautiful town and you can see the Caucasus mountains on the background mm-hmm. it's a very beautiful, very beautiful. and uh, yeah so Signagi trip then um, I went to Gudauri mm-hmm. which is uh, another skiing village but I went during the uh, Summer. spring spring yeah. mm-hmm. oh, okay. went during the spring absolutely beautiful, beautiful. place beautiful because mm-hmm. we went to a uh, lookout point that only one of our seniors knew okay. and that was this abandoned building but they had it is a proper lookout point because there are, there are benches and stuff and it was absolutely beautiful because see those areas are untouched by man mm. like there is um. not a building in sight there'll be one or two abandoned places but generally it's Ghost. If there are places, those are the ghost towns, mm. uh-huh. and it's be honestly the scenery is just absolutely beautiful. There's literally so many places you could visit so, here, Rob. I mean, and these are just the places that we have visited. Then it's just that we need to dedicate time for that. Yeah, that's yeah. that's the whole. Chance we have. I mean, amidst the semesters and stuff. Right. Um. Then there's this uh, place called. Um, so I went to another one called the Sabaduri Forest. Sabaduri. We went for a barbecue. We went there and then did a barbecue in this whole winter. You know, there was it was a very good vibe as well. Put on those you know Sri Lankan songs on the speaker, vibed a bit, and you know came back. And it was one hell of an experience. You know. Interesting. There's so many. So, um, there's so many places we're yet to explore. This um, it's a landlocked country, right? No, 
so one uh, one uh, coastline is bordering the black sea oh, okay so okay so that again that side it, we have yet to travel to that mm-hmm. so there's a, a city called batumi there mm-hmm. and batumi is uh, very well it's very popular during very the popular. summer yeah mm-hmm. during the summer because the beach is there it's a rocky beach but the beach is there people uh, come from you know turkey from uh, even russia people come there because it's a very popping area during the summer right and uh, yeah there are so many places that honestly we have no idea of right now but uh, yeah That's so i mean um, i think i think we need to talk a bit more about the weather because like we spoke about winter right like how it um, was for y'all you know moved in in winter and um, so how is spring summer and like is it hot or is it just like mildly warmer so, than winter summer gets really worse yeah i would say um luckily uh, that's that's when um the our dates nearing to come back to sri lanka that's when the summer goes to the peak um okay. near to july that goes till 30 35 yeah like peak summer it can go up to 40 45 so it gets go really to... cold and really hot it's really it goes both extremes on both sides of the thing Mm-hmm. and um uh, what do you call um and also again like how the other countries are it doesn't sweat here it just boil oh, from okay. inside just keep on boiling the humidity, the humidity is very is... yeah very low here and right. uh, but another thing is tbc is uh, it's located within a valley mm-hmm. there is a lot of the it's very windy here because mm-hmm. of the low okay. pressure area mm-hmm. that's created and let's say during the day there are sometimes at night like it's hard to walk against the wind mm. like you have to properly oh. lean for and walk mm. sometimes all oh, right the so this is during the summer or like it's just across the year probably close up this time autumn okay. and okay that's interesting especially when you're playing cricket as well you know the ball's <laughs> going to swing yeah, as like that oh my god beating oh, okay. jimmy yeah <laughs> okay that's interesting because um again that's something we uh, notice right extremes some i guess you can't beat the tropical weather yeah, you can't, you can't, you can't. You can't. that's that's when you miss i mean there's another thing i still remember like um uh, so there's the, the you know we actually in, in instances where we need to put garbage we need to throw trashes mm. to those there's like huge huge uh, you know uh, you know small little huge um, how do you call it like dumpster yeah those kind of stuff where we actually had to go and put the trashes on so when it when it's winter you mm-hmm. can't just go you know wearing just a normal t-shirt or a shorts or a, you know slippers you can't go with that you need to put on layers that's right. that's the status part i mean that pisses us off yeah, that's mean, that's when free like a comes in even to even to like say you're suddenly out of milk and to just run downstairs uh, to yeah. the then to put layers like, like the shop is probably the bottom floor of your building mm-hmm. but even to that you have to wear layers you have to put on shoes even within the building like you need, like you're not even heading out yeah, the building. probably downstairs yeah even within the building downstairs right. if there is no heating it's going to be very cold very cold uh, during winter right yes, yes. Yeah. okay so um that kind of um we've kind of like talked about everything i right? uh, touched on all aspects food language the people um religion even finances security um <clears throat> since you spoken about all that um it brings now it's i know it's not a question that we can apply all along but um i just like to ask this question towards the end just for a sense of uh, completeness you know settling down in georgia what would you say for like someone like us in sri lanka now you guys say for example you guys study there for like 5 years 6 years and say you guys do an internship there as well settling there like of course i know the answer is going to be no you're not going to ever ever consider settling there but what's your opinion on that you know i mean this is how i see georgia in the process of it so we are coming from sri lanka we are done up with that we are done with our a levels we're coming for the undergraduate here this period of 6 years that we spend here mm-hmm. is going to be the years where we mold each other Right. We we find out what we are really great at. We come out of our comfort zones, mm-hmm. and we know what our strengths are, what our weaknesses are, and how things we can improve on. Mm-hmm. I see that as a process, a very important process. And then when you are done with it, when you are polished, and then when you know what you are capable of, then probably moving out to a different, probably well developed country would be the better option to move forward. Right. I mean, right. you have people here even having intentions of coming back to the. we even coming back to sri lanka as well i mean 
uh, we we still have plans or we say 50 50 about it but yeah. then um i would say use this particular period of six years where you can really find out more people beautiful people and you know explore everything that you've not been able to explore this is like a period where you learn a lot of stuff you know, especially the age that we are actually no, like, passing. as a country would, would you say georgia is an ideal place to settle down in Think, um no see georgia is in the process of where they're trying to enter the eu okay. and um they're you know they're making a lot of changes within their economy within their government like even the roads they're going they're starting to be made to eu standards mm-hmm. so like that even um, left driving right hand driving both uh both, mean, both? both but predominantly it's uh left, it's left hand driving but oh, there so are, I mean the road, the road left the road hand, is left, 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 hand, left, hand, right. left hand, but right. both vehicles. You, can, you find both vehicles, yeah. Oh, okay. But here, people uh, see if it comes to that point where Georgia does enter the EU, mm-hmm. then I would say that I would give the possibility of staying here. Right, right. now, I have thought. Right now, that's I haven't even thought about it. But if that does happen. Mm-hmm. I would put some thought into it because you can travel around the EU once you get it, then you know your access to other countries is have the be, Schengen with you. Yeah. 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 And yeah. now that I spent six years here, it'll be uh it'll be a much easier process probably getting in uh, if you want to settle down here and you say get permanent residence. But in my opinion, in my case, I wa- uh, I hope that uh, Georgia would get into the EU. So that right. you know these kind of opportunities open up for us also. True, true. So uh, for a normal person, if you are looking to settle down here, I guess uh, it's very rare. It's very it's rare. Very rare. Yeah, it's very, it's rare. very rare that you have people. But there's who... nothing you can um, say aim for. Like uh, you know, get what I mean. There isn't an end you see in Georgia. Yeah. Georgia. Yeah. Do you have any personal experiences that you all want to share that you all feel like you all um want to like add up on like any fun instances that just pops into your mind when you talk about your lifetime in georgia i have a very fun instance like we were talking about dogs right uh, oh yes so, yes <laughs> we were talking about so one day the, uh, my roommates and a few other friends uh, mm-hmm. it was like one in the morning and we thought okay let's go for a walk one and in the morning did. what gave you all that idea to go for a walk at one that's in the a normal thing it's a normal that's thing a normal like day. i said it's it's a normal thing here one in the morning two in the morning three in the morning people just go out for a walk it's okay. completely normal. <laughs> All right. So at one in the morning, uh, we were like, okay, let's go for a walk. We walked for a bit. And then mm-hmm. once we went there, someone was like, okay, let's go to the city. Mm-hmm. And as the Peace Bridge is there, okay. which is a, a main uh, monument in Tbilisi. All right. And so we went, you know, there's a park there. We hung out around there. And just, we came back home and we were walking back home after dropping our friends off and while I was walking home there was a huge uh, there were huge dogs like, right. these are huge dogs these are like huskies the type of stray dogs here are huskies the big dogs okay they were right in front of our apartment and uh-huh. for some reason they had they were all worked up that day and so I uh, was walking home and uh, my two roommates, they were going in front of me and I was coming in the back and these dogs are slowly coming behind us and uh-huh. one fellow you know, decided that I was a really good snack for him and bit me. <laughs> <laughs> he bit you? Yeah, he, yeah, he, he, he just like, came up and bit you? Yeah, just came up and bit Straight me. up. Okay. But see, then, yeah, so I was shaking because honestly, when this huge dog comes up to you, for some, <laughs> honestly, thank to God, there was a Georgian who was walking close by and she pulled the dogs aside. All right. So I came home, I was shivering, mm-hmm. came and washed my legs, then went to the hospital. First hospital was closed. It was a clinic that was closed. Then went to the next hospital. They said, you have to go and get your shots from the vaccination center. Then went to the vaccination center. Now this is, this is now seven in the morning. Oh, six right. in the morning. <laughs> Went to the vaccination center. That place is closed. So I had to go back home and come back in the morning and got my shots. Oh, yeah, really? So it, no, I think yeah, it, yeah. There's, there's something with the St. Thomas's because uh, my my roommate <laughs> also got my dog. He's also a St. Thomas. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what I can say. This, but, uh, the pictures. <laughs> <laughs> what was it? Don't, don't ask it again. <laughs> 
you can edit it out yeah, edit it out the pictures come for us no i i'll keep that it's fine i mean uh, I'm, i'm kidding i'm kidding <laughs> but, uh, yeah no, so no. that is uh, but um, also we have a huge um, a very strong sri lankan community here uh, with um, so we have a sri lankan students association at uh, university and so it's very everyone's well very connected and everyone's very friendly and mm-hmm. everyone's you know going to help you if there is something going wrong just stuck right. somewhere some maybe studies maybe there's something going on with your living situation mm-hmm. here um people are going to there are enough and more seniors who will drop whatever they are doing to come and help us yeah yeah mm-hmm. and supportive yeah so even when we get together you know we sing everyone knows how to play an instrument everyone right. sings we sing our sri lanka our singala songs that we love to you know uh, sing Bring while having a drink. so you know they are they are for whatever it is at the end of the day you right. know you're not alone, but at the same time living in a different country i think this is probably the same for any um, international student yeah. but living alone in a different country is yeah. very hard right. it's very hard it's very lonely at a certain point you know there are so many people but you know you miss your mom your dad your family or whoever your support system was back at home no one's there here. yeah they might be a phone call away but at the same time it's very hard now i personally uh, last year as soon as i came here within a month my grandmother passed away in sri lanka and i was very close with her so i found that period very hard however you know they were my roommates my group mates ashwin nanuka all of them they were there they were always you know asking how are you and always they are to lean on mm-hmm. so like that it's a very it's a very tough situation you're in but at the same time you're here for a reason so as long totally. as you remember the reason you're here and you work towards that yeah. i guess make sure uh, you know your priorities yeah, you that's know that's where the fine line is you need to know what's priority and what's what you're here for and then you can literally have the fun yeah. that you want um, along the way i think um, that uh, that brings us actually to uh, um the bonus segment that i want to talk about right so um we've um touched on everything about the country but now um, we know right so the reason that sri lankans go to georgia most of the time is for uni and that's most often than not it's for medicine right so um i thought let's just um talk a bit about that as well because um, for now um you, both of you are uh, currently studying at the only excellent recognized um university in um, georgia yeah. right so um what would you say like um just a general bit of advice about the uni to students who are thinking of applying to the uni what would you hope someone had told you before you walked into the uni mm, ashwin that's a good one that's a good one um so basically um the whole curriculum of uh, of of the medicine that we're doing is for 6 years yeah okay um so um uh, you're going to have most of your non clinical stuff for the first 3 years and then slowly you're going to go into the clinicals in your you know probably the end of third year and also the fourth year mm-hmm. so once you're done with your third year probably that's when you really you know start into getting into the clinical exposure you mm-hmm. get into those clinical theaters you start wearing scrubs to start wearing stethoscopes um and that's when you really so start it takes observing. three years to get to that point right okay approximate proper three years because now i'm on my third year but yeah. here I am, i'm i'm wearing scrubs I've, i've i've last week i just observed my first proper surgery which was mm-hmm. an uh, which was a left inguinal hernia um with that was done and um, you know, we were there to observe um, we did not involve right. in it but we were we were allowed to observe how it was done It was for a proper 90 minute surgery and um, i mean the experience of wearing the scrub itself was a huge huge transition bro because you know first year itself we get to wear the doctor coats and stuff that's All like right. a huge stone yeah, yeah okay we got there but then at the end i mean while you're doing third year properly at the end of third year you'll be like oh wow okay we're getting there we're almost close by to where we're going to go to um, you get that feeling you get that feeling and um and 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 the hospitals here are pretty good bro i mean i mean um uh, more than the facilities the, the the way um the way they uh, uh they actually are organized um patients and also the way, the, the liberty they give for us to you know you know ask questions when you know pretty much reply to all the, all the inquiries we have mm-hmm. they're pretty good 
Uh, but the health health service could be getting better. A, it that, could get better. One other reason, one other thing that I think a lot of people say is that there are hospitals here, but there are no patients. Mm. Really, a lack yeah, of patients. Lack yeah. of patients. Is that, that is good or bad? I mean, is that good good for them, bad for you? All, or, or is there something wrong with the hospitals that the patients don't come? No, or no, are they no, just healthy? Just, uh, people are people are healthy, or people don't come to hospitals. The so negligent right. most of the time. They are very negligent. Yeah. In their health. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Because. Once again, Georgia has the largest population of smokers. <laughs> <laughs> All right, okay. So, smoking is like eating biscuits back yeah. in Sri Lanka. Like that's like a very normal thing. You see someone. So you see eat. anywhere, everywhere, just... people are smoking. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. So yeah, and so that's the clinical side. If you take uni now, after I came to uni, the uni has undergone like major refurbishment. Yeah, totally. Mm-hmm. And you know, it, it's a much more pleasant place to study whereas right. what it to what it was so like this i guess the uni is also um expanding and it's uh, like the curriculum also from ashwin onwards it changed from the previous mm. curriculum mm. the way the questions the way the exams were so with I mean, the module with, system with itself the, with the module system because normally um when you look at our seniors what they normally had was they'd had exams on each subject individually so right. for an example take physiology you take anatomy you take biochemistry everything pretty much individually on a certain day you'd have that mm-hmm. but from my semester onwards what had happened was you had a collection of subjects coming in together for a module for an example we'll have an exam on anatomy mm-hmm. clinical anatomy and radiology okay. together okay okay yeah and there will be another exam where you'd have uh, biochemistry biophysics histology and genetics four together four to- nothing uh-huh. individual Right. So yeah. it's a very, and also no. this is the final exam. So before that, like yeah, we have oral exams, midterms yeah. and all of that. So mm-hmm. you have to get a, you have to get a minimum mark from your orals. You have to get a minimum yeah. mark from your midterms for you to get into the finals. Into the there's final. always a oh, threshold okay. in that. So, mm-hmm. I mean, these are, all, these are all stuff that we did get to know was coming, mm-hmm. but probably the main thing that uh, I would have loved to know before coming here is that the there's very little dissections that happen yep. here. Little to none, to be honest. Okay. Dissections. So, in the first few years, you barely... Uh, so, is it like live they, cadavers are not available to do dissections? On? Because that cadavers. also... Uh, Pretty old ones, though. There, there yes. are very old cadavers. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And because that is also because there is a very, uh, like I said, um, a very... Uh, in Christianity, you don't donate bodies to science. Oh, okay. Because it's a very strong Christian country. People don't mm. donate their bodies to science. And therefore, there are not many um, bodies in the morgue mm-hmm. or cadavers for uh, students. And that also is restricted. Because dissections are also restricted uh, in some parts of the region. Mm. All right. So, like, um, yeah, I guess that affects us. Also, yeah. Yeah, it's just mannequins, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. I mean, yeah, I've seen like um, we have uh students coming in here to um do their dissections, so it's even even during the summer vacations. Yeah, you know, yeah. we've seen a lot of seniors. Um, probably I might have to start again as well. Um, yeah, so uh, I will also probably be. this year during that two months vacation we need we 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 tend to visit hospitals and you know at least get those exposures Exposures. attending under doctors getting you know um getting to see that how 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 challenging it is and how um how procedures are properly done and you know i would say sri lanka has a better better way better exposure to give than you know the countries around because the medical system i would say is even though the facilities are not top notch you know the experiences that you get you know it's there's ups and downs you learn a lot from that um, from what i've heard um i'm yet to see but from what i've heard no so uh, i was just telling me how um how in so he had done a few rotations or clinical rotations in sri lankan hospitals and he has come here Mm -hmm. and he was asked a question and he had answered the way he had answered was the way he would answer in Sri Lanka, which is to uh, make sure the patient doesn't accumulate a huge bill at the end of the day. Right. Whereas oh, for him, whatever, I'm not sure of the condition, but what he had said was to do a physical examination and ultrasound and so on. Mm-hmm. But his doctor in Georgia had been like, why, why would you even bother? You can straight away do a CT. So okay. CT are abundant here, whereas 
a CT scan in Sri Lanka is very expensive. Yes. So the, the thinking pattern is also... The approaches are different. Approach is much different, yeah. Yeah, I know because um, a lot of my friends also who, whilst studying there, they um, prepare for the ERPM exams and stuff here. So the yeah. approaches is the biggest... Um, factor you know like you can mm. there's different ways it all depends on the facilities and the, again mm. the people that you deal with right and everything it all comes into play yeah so that's yeah. interesting i mean i guess once you start doing your clinical rotations um, regularly you will, you will have a better understanding of um mm -hmm. the education and the exposure you get i mean like you know taking histories and stuff it all has to be done in georgia right most probably yeah uh, not uh, you obviously have a translator next yeah, year. Yeah, there is a translator. All right, so also. translator would be um like a, a staff, a staff, a staff member, staff member, staff, staff member. Yeah. Oh, okay, so that's so they appoint staff members to um. Okay. Yeah. So, we are not that intellectual to know Georgian. Yeah. Uh, like, come on, where, yeah, where it comes to Georgian yeah. also will be learning the basic, basic stuff just to we survive the medical terms. Yeah. Right. So that that so, puts yeah. a that puts a big hindrance on uh, learning, right? So like, how many people will be there for one translator? Mm -hmm. Do you all get yeah. one translator per person, or like, no, surely not? I don't. Uh, we haven't been in a position because we haven't ever taken histories. All right. Okay. Not yet, though. Not yet, but at the same time, uh, normally it's one translator because it again people go to the uh, hospitals as groups. Mm -hmm. like it will right. be a group of ten. People. Okay. So that group. People will get one translator, something like cool, that. Cool, cool. Okay, that's cool. I'm not but uh, yeah, that, that's a bit um. Because we're limited, right? Like we're not yeah. going to go as a bunch. There's only like maximum of ten to twelve people in a group, so yes. it's pretty limited. In case for in for instance, we we get three beds. Probably we have three translators. It's going to be pretty limited. It's not going to go uh, as if huge bunch coming and we need a lot of translators. No, so it's okay. it's going to be pretty limited. So we're, we're fine with that way. Yeah, that's mm. that's interesting. Mm, yeah and other than that it's just as usual lectures and things like that right? the curriculum goes on like, yeah. so, so we have lectures and classes both both so it lectures is where you know the whole lectures is where the whole badge attends it's okay. like you know in, in, so if you take a badge it has around 250 270 peeps in it they're like all sri lankan indians middle east everyone every international are there georgians in studying in, like no. natives they'd rather prefer they'd rather do the georgian curriculum than the yeah. english curriculum like i told you ah, they have like okay. three okay okay all of them more, not, yeah all of them would do the georgian, all of them would do georgian. georgian curriculum because their plan is to stay in georgia and for them right they need georgian so a georgian who's planning on moving somewhere else would do the english curriculum or just stick to the georgian they curriculum? would do uh, I mean, I think he could do the Georgian curriculum and he could do the entrance exam for the respective country. Yeah. Uh, the thing is, you have to have a certain knowledge of your... Probably English might, might have to do violets as well. Yeah. yeah. Right. Um, and yeah, when it comes to lectures, like I was saying, um, it's like it's like a huge... Uh, the whole badge attends to it. That's like a huge, massive class. Mm -hmm. um, and there's another thing called where we have a group class where we it's only the group. It's just those 10 to 12 people in it. Mm -hmm. attends and that's where we get questioned it's a discussion group ah, right. and then at the end, of the day, end of that after the discussion they will ask questions on that material exactly. and you will get marks which will be end, end of the day added to your final life again right. Literally so internal. um talking about like so education aside like if do you have time to do like um other stuff is it pretty chill or like is it um how like you know eight to four classes and stuff and then like do you have time to live like the social aspect of um living in georgia is you okay? do thing is it it's very dependent on the subject and yeah. the right. lecturer you have <laughs> some okay. lecturers are very strict thing is you can know your subject matter through and through still they won't give you marks to pass okay so yeah. in that case you know if the, if it's the day before that exam obviously you're not going to be talking to anyone you're not going to be eating mm. <laughs> However, be sleep yeah, as well. so yeah. that's like subjects like physiology, subjects like for me, physiology, biochemistry. All right. And for him, pharmacology, pharmacology, yeah, pharmacology, pharmacology yeah. And uh, but it's it's just a fine line yeah. where you really need to know where you need to be focusing on what. So it's not like we can always, it's not like we really need to be, you know, totally into studies. Yeah, I mean, that's a priority, but then you need to know when and what to prioritize when to say yes and when to, and say, when no. to say no right. that's a big thing i'll come out sure or no i won't be able to because i'm studying yeah 
you need to be brave. For I that. think that's yeah. that, that that's not just Georgia. That's, that's everywhere, right? That's everywhere. Yeah, yeah that's need everywhere. To, we need to have the priorities, right? Yeah. That was um, yes. Thank you for that, man. Like, I'm pretty sure someone who's like um looking to move into Georgia for studies would find that useful. I mean, because you know that's um on a personal experience. Like you know, before I came to uni, there were some things I wish people had told me, and same mm-hmm. thing, you know. So like you said, how seniors are very supportive to you. That's what the juniors expect as well, right? So thank you so much, yeah. guys, for that bonus segment in addition to the initial segment. And uh, thank you for the entire podcast for taking the time out and you know for doing this on a short notice because um, I think yeah. less than a week to do. And you had your exam, you had an exam today morning, Manjika. So thank you for that as well, you know, <laughs> coming in wow. down. And again, sorry about the technical issues that we had to face in the beginning. Like I said, a bit rusty after some time, right? But so no, um, you. It took off running. That's <laughs> thank you, man. Thank you, thank you. Um, I also again thank you, Ashwin, because you were one of the guys who actually, you know, like you know, Masan, you need to do this podcast. You need to come back on, um, you know, yeah. come back and do this thing. And again, like um, always, always. Manjika, you were, you were, I think it's just fate that you were meant to be in the podcast at one point, right? Because you were going to be an interviewee back in season one and uh, that didn't work out and uh, somehow you're yeah, back here. Like I said, we can... <laughs> just... okay, now, you know, okay, we can... Now, now it's unfiltered, yeah? We're, we're talking shit. So, so, yeah. <laughs> no, no, it's just chill on. <laughs> but oh, yeah, it's fine. <laughs> so, we'll, we'll have bloopers. We'll have bloopers. Okay, okay, okay. Right, man, oh, thank you so much, man. So, um... I guess we can end up over here and uh, call it a day because as you see, the lights are going off and coming on. Oh, and, yeah, yeah. Right. Um, thank you, guys. And um, nice time thank, thank you. you thank you for having us, man. Yeah, look, man. Thank Always you very a pleasure, much. Man. Always a pleasure. And thank you to the listeners for in- tuning into this podcast. Um, Especially, it's been a year and a half since we started. So thank you for tuning in back, tuning back in. And um, it's been quite a long podcast and I hope you guys learned something out of it and I hope you guys had fun. I had fun. I had fun doing this. I, I miss doing this. And I had fun. Yeah. And I uh, hope you had fun and I hope you enjoyed this podcast. And if you did, again, like I said at the beginning, rate the podcast if you're listening to it on an audio platform, if you're listening to it on Spotify, Google Podcasts or anything. And if you guys are um, watching this on YouTube, drop your, if you have questions, drop it on your comments, uh, drop it on the comments. Uh, suggestions always welcome and yeah, good to go. Don't forget to share it with your friends. Tico Talks. Tico Talks. Thank you. Right.